I'm back and I'm happy and I'm motivated and I'm excited. <laughs> so this video is going to be about um, now that I have quit drinking, um, I'm going to explain the process of getting to where I am today, where I feel totally confident and secure in my sobriety. Finally got back into the gym today after not being able to go for a week because I've had such extreme low back pain. Dude, it's just, I don't even care about the pain anymore now. I'm just like, can I just get back into the gym, please? Oh, live. Ah, ah, ah. It's amazing how, you know, you can get into the habit of, oh, I don't want to go to the gym. And then when you can't, you're like, I just want to go to the gym. And, uh, yeah. So after I hit my, um, first day of the year mark, after I had been sober throughout Christmas and New Year's, I was like really excited to start my new life. And it was extremely motivating. At this point, I had already been lifting for about 10 years, so I was pretty seasoned in the gym anyway, and I've always made up my own workouts. Um, I've just been always interested in that ever since I started lifting. But this time was different. Anyway, the way that this dials into my sobriety is <laughs> I um, became excited and addicted to going to the gym again and it gave me something to do on a Friday night rather than going to the bar, you know, because it's, it's really amazing how your entire life changes. Whether you're a party animal or not, if you just like to stay at home and drink, your life will change and your habits will change and your interests will change. You'll get bored because I didn't even know what I liked to do. I didn't have any hobbies as partying, going to the gym and working. Like that was it that's boring. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I, I dropped my body fat percentage, um, in that month by eight to 10%, but I was around 25% body fat. And when I got tested after that month, I was at 16% body fat. Um, I was focusing a little bit on my diet, but I didn't know exactly what I should be doing in order to attain my goal. I decided to hire a coach and start training for my first bikini competition. And this is where my life really started to change because I have always been one of those people that I'm like, I'll just teach myself. I know, I know how to work out, you know, and I did. But when it came to really dialing in, uh, my nutrition and my workouts, I didn't know how to shape my physique. I knew how to lose weight and I knew how to build muscle, but I didn't know how to shape it. Um, and that is what this coach really helped me with. She is incredible. I mean, she actually cared <laughs> and uh, she was just, she was great. And I related to her um, on a deeper level and I felt like she was my friend and uh, and I really enjoyed working with her and I'm so grateful to have had her for my first prep. She kind of set an example of the type of coach that I want to be and that I am and she put me on a very regimented prep and I loved it and I became really like addicted. It was a, it was a nice, clean, healthy addiction. Um, and I remember my 90 day mark, I had to go to Tahoe for a company trip for the weekend. And I, I feel like gambling is one of my triggers because I love to gamble. I love to shoot craps. And with the drinks being free, it's extremely difficult to remain sober in that situation. I'm like, no, I'm a gambler. I'm still going to gamble. I'm still going to have fun just like I were if I were drinking, but I'm just not going to drink, you know? And for the most part, it worked. I mean, for a couple of hours, I was able to, you know, shoot some craps and, you know, play a little roulette and blackjack and stuff. And I was just drinking coffee and Red Bull and O'Doul's. Um, but still, I noticed I just wanted to go to bed at like 10. It was so exhausting for me to be around so many people. 
and you know yelling because you can't hear everything that's going around you so you're talking really loud and that just gets annoying and being around drunk people when you're sober like oh my god this was me at this event last year i'm a fucking idiot <laughs> And I ended up getting up really early the next morning. I went to the gym at the hotel and it was nice. Like those are the days that you just feel refreshed and accomplished and motivated, you know? And so it was a great start to my day and it was a great learning lesson because that was like a true test. Like I had hit 90 days. Nobody would know if I had a shot of vodka, you know? And plus, nobody would care. It's not like the reason I quit drinking was because I had an intervention or because, you know, I had a boyfriend that was telling me not to drink. No, this was totally my decision and it was totally my decision if I wanted to break it. But I didn't. And I felt even stronger because of that. So it made me just want to keep going and keep going. So I made it six months which was also when my competition date was so it was really exciting to be able to celebrate my first bikini competition and my six month of sobriety mark like i was a new person and nothing could stop me at this point i was like i i can do anything i can't believe it this is crazy um and it was freaking exhilarating uh it felt way better than anything I've ever done because of alcohol. Pretty much the only thing that alcohol has ever given me is false confidence, which leads me to meet people who I call friends, but they're actually not my friends because they don't know the real me. It just, it doesn't really give you anything that is um, sustainable um, and useful in prolonging your life, prolonging your career, pro prolonging your health. It literally doesn't give you any sort of building block to make you happier. Um, and this was. <laughs> so uh, after my first prep, I decided I wanted to go right into another one. And um, it was about, I think 10 weeks later was my next competition. Yeah, I had a difficult time with that prep. That one was really stressful and hard. It was the first time I ever cried on a treadmill. But hey, it's all an experience. Anyway, getting back to getting back to Friday. So after that competition was over, I felt like I needed to take a bit of an off season. My coach concurred. And so when I didn't have the, a fitness goal, uh, I had to find a different goal. So um, at the beginning of my sober year, I started to put away a penny for each day that I was sober. So for the first day that I was sober, I put away one penny. For the 10th day, I put away 10 pennies. And I kept a jar of change on my uh, nightstand and a piggy bank right next to it so I would physically move them from one to the other. This exercise really, really helped because it gave me like a tangible milestone. You know, it's one thing to look at an app on your phone and see, oh yeah, I'm sober for 27 days. But if you are physically counting out 27 pennies and you can feel it and you're like, wow, that's cool. You know, I started out with just one. <laughs> I became addicted to success and goals. And so anyway, I ended up taking that money uh, because after a year I had over $600. I a penny a day. And I wanted to go to Hawaii for my birthday. Um, and I wanted to go alone because I had been single for the first time, for the longest time in my adult life. I had been sober for the longest time and celibate too. Uh, because when you're in prep, you cannot even think about dating anybody. So with all of those things, I was like, I really need to like initiate this newfound independence. Like I felt more independent and confident with myself than I ever have before. I've always been the kind of girl that I need somebody. I need a boyfriend. And if I don't have a boyfriend, then I need my best friends. And, you know, I just, I never felt comfortable kind of standing on my own. And with this, I learned that I actually prefer to be alone. I'm quite an introvert. I get energy from being alone and that's okay. A lot of times in my life, I've been faced with people that 
don't understand that. And so they try to tell me, you need to be more outgoing or you need to be more approachable or you need to talk more. No, I don't need to. Like, this is what makes me happy. It doesn't mean that I'm mad at you. It doesn't mean that I dislike you. It just means this is how I am and this is how I operate. And I do like to be outgoing, but not all the time. It takes a lot of energy for me. It's really hard. So um, I realized that that was okay. And I wanted to take advantage of that realization and take this trip. So I posted on my Facebook that I was going to Hawaii for my birthday and I was so excited. And I got a message from my longtime friend who is now my boyfriend um, and he was like, what island are you going to? And I said, I don't know. I'm just going. And he goes, well, you should come to Maui. I live here and, you know, I've got a spare room so you could save money on a hotel and just, you know, stay in my spare room. And <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. Okay. That sounds good. And then he was like, and you know, I'm just going to take the whole week off and then you won't have to rent a car and I get to show you all over the island. And I'm like, dude, you're kind of intruding on like my independent girl trip but I mean it was kind of like an offer I couldn't refuse right so um I got here and he just totally over delivered I mean he took me to waterfalls and black sand beaches and red sand beaches and secret beaches and we like ate a whole bunch and it was fun because I finally found someone that I could, that could keep up with my kind of eating. <laughs> and uh, he just, he changed my life. And I will always remember that trip and just be super grateful that somebody that hadn't seen me in years, like three years, I hadn't seen Jake in a long time, uh, felt felt compelled to take a whole week off of work just to show me these things and didn't ask for anything I mean I it was just amazing and I think it's obvious why I moved here um, I had to be with somebody like that so uh, now I, I like to look back on all of those, um, experiences and really think like what got me to this life. And it really has everything to do with just making a decision to quit drinking, making a decision to stop self, self sabotaging myself, stop making excuses for myself and just try to be better and try to be the best me and not just for me but for my family like i know it couldn't feel good for my mom to hear me divulging all of these experiences with dating all of these horrible guys and you know blacking out and going to Vegas and not remembering certain things and you know that can't feel good for a mother to hear that and you know for my mom to have to nurse me through um, a recovery that I couldn't even make it more than a week you know that must feel terrible as a parent to think like you know I did all the things right what is wrong with her you know, and I felt that way a lot. I felt like there was something wrong with me and there wasn't anything. I was just trying to suppress who I really was. And when you, when you kind of realize that everybody is unique and it's okay to feel how you feel and it's okay to act how you act, your whole world will change. It's like you take the blinders off, you know, and now I don't fuck around. I don't, you know, I have had friends that I've had to call it quits with, not because they did anything to me, but just because I could feel that they weren't truly in support of me. And that's okay. 
you know, and I won't apologize for that because really in the end, this life, your life is about you and what makes you happy. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And the reason that there's nothing wrong with that is because even if you think it's selfish to take care of yourself or put yourself first, really what's happening when you put yourself first is you're making yourself better for the other people in your life. So as a mother, if you take care of yourself, you're going to be able to be an incredible parent as a spouse, as a girlfriend, as an employee, you have to take care of yourself so you can give your best self to everybody else in your life that gets to enjoy you, you know? So that's really, that's like the main thing I wanted to share today. Um, like all of the sobriety stuff aside, not saying you have to quit drinking. It's not for everybody. And that's not to say that not everybody can do it. Not everybody has to do it. I'm just the kind of person that I am so all or nothing. Like I tell people I quit drinking because I was way too good at it. Like I just, I was. <laughs> and you know, when you have like an overachiever, all or nothing kind of mentality, you can channel that towards anything. And I just chose to channel it towards health and fitness and business and helping people rather than how much can I drink tonight? <laughs> um, but yeah, not everybody acts like that. Some people can just have a beer and then they're done and they might not even drink again for like three weeks and not even think about it. I at some times wish that I was that kind of person, but other times I really enjoy being this type of person. It's who I am. Can't change it. And I'm pretty happy. Okay. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share my little tidbit of life with you. All right. So I, I'm going to go put some makeup on now because I got to pick up Jake at the airport and I want him to come back thinking like, dang, this girl's busted. What did I come home for? And I got these guns. Ugh.